Let's take a look at all the controls on MELD. MELD comes with two oscillators, oscillator A and B, and also two filters, A and B over here. The engines are identical in both of them, A and B. So let's just check out B here. I'm gonna turn off A, and we'll just listen to B. So in this basic shapes engine, we have a shape knob and a tone knob. Now these two knobs will change depending on the engine you select. And you can see here the, the name also changes. So let's go through these one by one, starting with basic shapes. This is a wavetable engine. So you're hearing a sine wave when the shape is all the way down. If I increase it, it morphs into a triangle, sawtooth, and square. Now the tone knob also changes depending on where you're at in the wavetable position. So in a sine wave, you get this wave folding like effect. On the triangle, similar. In the sawtooth, also similar. But if you switch to the square, it changes to pulse width modulation. All right, so that's pretty cool, basic shapes. Let's switch to the second one here, dual basic shapes. So when the both knobs are all the way down, you get to choose that same shape and the detune is all the way down, but I can increase the detune. So you can hear two oscillators and I'm essentially adjusting the detuning amount between them. Now what's really interesting is that this particular engine has this icon over here, which refers to this icon over here. So we're in this scale mode. So the current scale mode is C major. Let me change this to a C Lydian, let's say. So now when I adjust the detune, well, it sounds exactly the same because I have not activated scale mode for this synthesizer. Now it's active. And now let's have a listen to detuning. It's essentially snapping to notes that are available in the C Lydian scale. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's check out another engine, Noisy Shapes. You can hear some noise in there. Pretty interesting how the waveform drastically changes. Nice, let's check out Square Sync. So this kind of like two syncs at the same time. So if I adjust frequency one, get that classic sync sound. And here again, you get sync. So kind of like double sync, interesting. Square fifth, normal square. I guess that's a fifth above, sounds pretty high. And you also have pulse width, all right. Let's check the next one, sub oscillator, all right. Hopefully you can hear that. Shaping the tone of that sub oscillator. There's an arc snub which adds a oscillator below the sub oscillator. Well, technically this should be called the sub oscillator. Not bad. Switching to swarm sign, and this also has that same icon. So let's bring the two knobs down first to hear just the pure sine wave. And now let's introduce the motion. Right, we're hearing multiple sine waves out of tune from each other. Very interesting movement. Reminds me a bit of that deep note effect from the 80s. But now let's change the spacing. Let me turn off this scale option. Let's switch out to a swarm triangle, same thing but a triangle version. That sounds quite musical. Seems like it's in scale, even though I've turned this off. Let's turn it back on. There we go. You can hear the difference. Let's try Swarm Saw. Interesting. By the way, you can also hit this arrow button to switch to the next engine. Square version of the same. Harmonic FM, so pure sine wave. 
we're adding FM synthesis. Seems like it's just one modulator, one carrier. But I can also change the ratio or the tuning between the two operators. I don't believe this is following the scale. It doesn't have that icon. Fold FM. Intense. This looks more like wave folding. But this sounds more like really heavy, aggressive uh, FM. Next, squelch. Pretty subby sine wave, but it sounds like there's some aliasing happening in the upper frequencies. Classic old school talk dubstep style bass sound you can create with this. Not bad. Next, simple FM. All right, so bring everything down here. Pure sine wave. Nothing much happens until I increase the ratio. So it seems like the ratio knob is also kind of like activating the entire FM engine. And this is, I guess, the FM depth. FM index, maybe. Changing the ratio between the carrier and modulator. This is fun. Chip. And it also has that icon. We're changing the tone. Pulse width, mainly. Now, it sounds mainly like an octave, so I don't know how much this is actually making a difference here. Not too much here. Next, let's check out Shepherd's Pie. So this is basically to create that um, shepherd tone effect. So this perceived tone of constantly increasing or constantly decreasing pitch. That's the shepherd stone. Tarp. This basically is to emulate kick drum sounds. Pretty cool. Extra tone. Weird modular synthesis style sound. Noise loop. This is pretty interesting. You can hear the modulation on that tone. It gets faster with the rate knob. But with the fade knob, I can smoothen the modulator. So you almost don't even hear it here. And as I increase it, it gets sharper. So it sounds like a sample and hold style modulator. Not bad. Next, filter noise. I really hated that Wavetable didn't have a noise generator. But it's cool that we have a straight up noise generator here in Meld. Bit crunch. Interesting. Crackle. Now we're entering the effects category. So this is basically emulating vinyl crackle, much better than that really horrible audio effect uh, that they've had for the longest time, vinyl distortion. Rain. You can hear it's also pitched as I'm playing different notes. Pretty cool. Next, and I think this is the last one, bubble. So as you can see, a lot of variety we're getting in the engine itself. So we're not even touching the filter, any of the modulators. And just with the meld audio engine, we can create some pretty interesting sounds. And as you know, there are two of them. Let's go back to A here. I'm going to choose, let's try Swarm Square. So we have this really thick sound. Let's go into the filter section here. Filter cutoff, filter resonance. You can morph from low pass to band pass to high pass to notch. And we get this pretty significant collection of different filters. I like that we do have a vowel option as well. Let's 
That'd be more obvious with just a basic sawtooth or something like that. Not bad. I also like this filter filter. It's like a pretty aggressive sounding low pass filter. Alright, I'm not going to go over every filter here. You can explore this. Especially the plate resonator and membrane resonator is pretty cool. Physical modeling style filters. Let's talk about modulation here. So we get envelopes, we have an amp envelope, we have a modulation envelope, we have a couple of LFOs, and interestingly, LFO1 has a separate LFO1 effect version, and of course there's LFO2. We have the mod matrix, just like wavetable, a MIDI tab here for assigning various controls to MIDI, and also an MPE tab. Now that's just the A section, specifically for engine A, and we also have one for engine B. So let's set up some modulation. I'll go to A here. Let's say I want the LFO to modulate the filter cutoff, but I don't want the standard LFO. I want the affected version. Now the standard LFO has some basic shapes here. You can pick from different shapes. Let's go ahead and assign this in the matrix. So select the knob and choose what we would like to assign it to. By the way, right now LFO1 and LFO1 effects are identical. So actually let me just assign it to LFO1 effects. I can add steps. Gets a wander shape. There's alternate, which already has steps. We have Euclid. Choose the number of pulses. Interesting rhythms you can create with this. Just the phase offset. All right, so that's fun, LFO one. But let me go back to a basic shape here, like, wow, there's wave folding for the LFO. Pretty intense. Sine wave shape. Now we're using LFO one effects. So what we get to do is further process the LFO shape with these processors. So for example, I can load in a quantizer and increase the amount. Right, we're getting a quantized version of that sine wave. But I can also bring in a second effect. Let's try, uh, let's do a fade out. So that's pretty interesting. You can combine two different effects to further process your LFO. Now LFO2 is much simpler, you just get to choose a waveform and you just apply it to whatever parameter you'd like to apply it to. So the envelopes work in a similar fashion. You only have two envelopes, the amp envelope and the modulation envelope. And if you've worked with envelopes before, they work basically the same way. Let me quickly give you a demonstration, maybe in this chip mode. I'll assign it to the rate here, I'm going to the matrix. Oscillator macro 2, I guess that's the second knob here. We're going to assign it to the mod envelope, M envelope. Let me tone down this modulation so we can hear this one a bit better. Let's check out the mod envelope. Let's also apply it to tone. Let's scale limit it. Ah, so that's what changes. So the modulation might still be an octave. But you're hearing it stepping through notes. Now I want to show you another very fascinating feature on the synthesizer. So I've always found it annoying that we don't have glide in polyphonic mode. So currently we're in polyphonic mode, we have the spread option and stacking options, and as always, very limited options, and the stacking sounds quite bad. So for example, if I switch to basic shapes, choose a sawtooth shape,
And I would like to thicken that up, turn on stacking, let's say two, two voice stacking, increase the spread. I don't know, it just doesn't sound as nice as some other modern synths. And you can hear how they all start exactly at the same phase. And you get that very strange laser zap kind of an effect. Uh, anyway, I'm not a big fan of this, but let me just turn this off. But going back to glide. So in fact, we don't even have a glide option over here, but if you go to settings, we now have glide for each oscillator. We can also turn off key tracking for these oscillators. So helpful if you just wanna make a sound effect. We also have this scale awareness feature that you can turn off for the oscillator or even for the filter. So let's leave all this stuff on and let's check out glide. So that's pretty amazing. Glide. And that's just for oscillator A. I'll turn on oscillator B. Let's pick something else. I don't know, fold FM. Let's add some glide to this one. Now technically it's not glide, it's this portamento mode, but I can switch to glide mode. And if you just listen to oscillator A here, in gliss mode, it's actually following the scale. So instead of just gliding from one note to another, it's kind of stepping through the notes of that scale. So that's pretty cool. Let's engage the second oscillator and let's set it also to this gliss mode. It's a pretty cool effect. Let's engage this drive. This is like kind of the master drive. There is a built-in limiter, so you can avoid clipping. All right, so those are some of the main features on the new Meld synthesizer. Stay tuned for more videos on Ableton Live 12.